Katie Russell with Virginia Wedding and Event Network and Wedding Industry Insider here at beautiful Bella Giornata Events in historic Fredericksburg. We have an amazing expert panel with us today to answer some questions that our brides and grooms-to-be may have. But as you all know, this is uh, the holidays, so it is engagement season. There are 52,000 weddings a year in Virginia and 40% of them will become engaged over the next few weeks with another little landslide before Valentine's Day. So right now we're going to introduce our expert panel. And we'll start with you. Good morning. My name is Jennifer Childs. I'm the Director of Sales and Marketing at the Courtyard by Marriott Historic District. Good morning, Tony Collins, General Manager of the Courtyard by Marriott Historic District. Hi, my name is Jessica Delapuca, and I'm the owner of Fredericksburg Jeweler. Hi, I'm Jasmine Wisniewski, and I'm the owner of Cool Cat Cupcakes. All right, and I'm Mark Gonzalez with InStep Entertainment. And I'm Matthew Twing with Matthew Twing Photography. This is Dee Dee Russell with Virginia Wedding and Event Network live at Bella Giornata Events thanks to KK Media. And we're here with Jasmine with Cool Cat Cupcakes. So she's going to show us how to make rosettes on these gorgeous cupcakes. You just start with a small star tip and just do a little in the center and do a circular motion like that and pull off. And then just slowly turn the cupcake around, do it again. Really nothing to it. Just a little dot in the middle, a little circle. And we just do these all around the cupcake like this. Almost done. And I just used a fresh strawberry frosting on a vanilla bean cake. And just like one more right here to fill it in. And then we just go on the top and we add just a few more like that. Very simple. Oops. And one more. And then when you're done, you might have little gaps. So I just take the star tip and just press it in and pull. Press in and pull. Like that. That. Be up here. There. And right there. And that's pretty much, that's pretty much it. And you have a beautiful cupcake. What are some of the things um, a couple might do to, to kind of understand how they're going to select their budget, especially where the venue is concerned? Well, I think most of the weddings that we see coming out environment uh, get supported by, you know, their, their parents or somebody else. I think it's good to get them involved in the conversation too. I think mostly they're surprised by the amount of time and effort it takes them to book a wedding. I would highly suggest to find a, um, a wedding planner if you can't afford one. Find your best friend, not a relative, not your brother or sister. They have them help you. It's a, it's a very uh, it's a very extended process. You need to make sure you get some help on it. Okay, so as far as the budget is concerned, that would be really something they kind of have to have a good idea before they give you guys a call or any venue a call because that's going to be really relative in the type of wedding that they have, the numbers they can accommodate, and, and those are going to be some of the things you guys touch on first. Absolutely, and as Jennifer mentioned, most more mm -hmm. times than not, people come with some vague numbers and vague months, and mm -hmm. that doesn't help them. That doesn't help us give them a cost, proper cost. So. So let's touch on, you just said months. Can we just agree right now in case there's anyone out there that doesn't know which are the first uh, four months of the year that get booked up for, for the wedding venues? June and October are very, very hot, um, followed, I would say, by September and then probably May. Um, but pretty much April through October, especially in Fredericksburg, you can't go wrong with any of those months. So for brides that are recently engaged, you still can find 2016 wedding dates Register on VAWENetwork.com. We will help you find them personally, call and find uh, dates available. And some of the things that a bride may not know about is that uh, venues are offering more frequently Sunday weddings and even Friday weddings and some weekday weddings. Um, if you have a smaller wedding, uh, some of the venues are open to having something specially designed for you as a bride who may not have those large numbers or may be flexible for a weekday wedding. Absolutely. Okay, great. Thank you guys so much. All right, so uh, we have a lot of brides and grooms uh, meeting with Jessica. I would love to know when a groom contacts you, we, we have a lot of bride uh, information. We really do. We kind of, those grooms are a little bit of a mystery. And some of us get to meet with the brides throughout the wedding, but we don't always get to, to, to hear from the groom so much. So you might be one of the few wedding industry professionals that really gets an insight on that groom. So tell us a little bit about your clients that are coming in to buy those wedding rings. Yeah, I'm actually one of the first people to know that um, a couple is going to be engaged. So a guy comes in, he doesn't know a lot about diamonds, and so what we do at Fredericksburg Jeweler is that we sit down with our clients and we explain a diamond buying process. So I go through him and I explain you know, the cut, the clarity, 
um, the scintillation, the polish, the symmetry, everything that makes different price points different on certain stones. I also show him all different types of cuts of stones. Um, and I also show him some current trends in jewelry that I'm seeing in fashion magazines and everything else that's definitely been directed towards the brides uh, currently right now to give him a good idea of what he should buy. Now, are, are they feeling confident when they come in to see you? Do you feel like the grooms maybe had some advice from her best friend, mother, mother-in-law, father? He does. He'll, he'll come in with his cell phone and he'll be like, okay, future mother-in-law sent me this picture and then the best friend sent me this picture. And if we could just combine this and this and this, then maybe we could make a good ring, which is really cool because he's still adding his personality to it, but he's kind of bringing in, I don't know, advice from his future mother-in-law, their best friend, their sister. Um, and then that way, it really just kind of breaks the ice between me and him, and he can begin to feel more comfortable with my advice. And even though he's helping me with the design perspective, I can still help him with learning how to purchase the diamond, which is actually a huge investment. So there's a lot to learn. Um, and I definitely feel once he leaves my doors that he definitely feels more comfortable and also confident in buying a ring that she really loves. All right, and then you have a little secret, a secret, well, well maybe not so secret. <laughs> we all know that social media has changed the entire world in the last five to seven years. It's changed the way we do business. It's changed the way we find information. Um, it's changed the way we connect with our clients. A lot of our brides will look up a business on social media before they even uh, go and connect with that business or call that business to kind of see some of your images, pictures, and, and your personality a little bit. So what, uh, what is the number one social media resource for you that helps you accomplish the task of finding this uh, young guy the perfect ring for his uh, perfect girl? Yes, yeah, so my younger grooms are coming in and they're actually coming up with the idea of giving me her Pinterest account. And Pinterest is where a bride or a bride-to-be can develop a wedding page of their specific dress in mind or their ring in mind or anything that has to do with their specific wedding day. So he's able to give her her link to me and then that way I don't figure out, you know, she doesn't figure out that um, I'm looking at what, what she's made. And then I actually take all of her images and I design her ring based off of what she likes. And typically you're going to see a trend in what she likes. And so that way we can leave the element of surprise still there. Because normally a couple of these days will come in so that she gets the ring she desires, he gets the heat off of him and everything's okay. But now we're coming up with a way that social media has allowed us to look kind of into her interests without her knowing and still keeping that element of surprise there. And that's kind of cool. Okay, so, so one more question. Let us know what is trending in wedding rooms these days? Oh, we yes. used to see... I mean, over the decades, yeah. we've seen a lot of different things. We've seen simple, vintage is a key word, rustic, and those types of things are floating around social media heavily with a lot of that topic trending. So yes. what are you seeing as the trends in, in gold size, style, cut, and things like that? Colored gold is coming back big time. Yellow gold's coming back. Green gold's coming in. Rose gold's coming in. Wait, we need it. We need to see what the, what does that look like. I um, have to even admit, I'm not sure what oh green gold my, looks like. Green gold is a, it's actually a mix between gold and copper, and it brings up this this green hue and the girls they love it and they're getting it off of all these designer pages so I've, I've started creating green gold which is kind of cool okay. yeah <laughs> I'm yeah to look on your page and find out if yeah. you're not sure Fredericksburg Jewelers yeah. you'll see them on uh, Facebook and, <laughs> and all over very easily but, but hopefully you'll put an example of that up on your Facebook page at least yeah or Pinterest so that we can see that what that looks like that's yeah. interesting um, also, again, uh, colored stones are in. I'm doing a lot of champagne, black diamonds, purple diamonds, blue diamonds. Um, I'm also, a lot of people are doing gemstones as their center stones. So I have natural sapphires. I'm doing natural rubies just to kind of give a, a, some color and some pop inside of it. Um, and then as far as the cut of the stone, I would have to say cushions and rounds are about 90% of my market right now. Um, and that's what's in demand. That's what you're seeing mostly in the bridal magazines and things like that. Um, so I'm mostly selling round stones and, and the cushion gold stones. Okay, so mm -hmm. Jasmine and Jonathan, down. I'm sorry, Jessica and Jonathan, downtown, yes. Fredericksburg Jewelers. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you have worked with lots of brooms-to-be in that nervous moment that they're having, anxiety. You're going to help them pick out something gorgeous and beautiful. Make sure you find them online. Mm -hmm. um, we're so, so glad to have, we could have a, a long discussion about a million different things. 
um, because a lot of us don't think about jewelry until the moment that you go in to, to buy it. So if you're nervous or you have any nerves, uh, you definitely want to contact Jessica. You find them again uh, at Fredericksburg Jewelers. Oh, and also Richmond Jewelers. Okay, Jasmine with Cool Cat Cupcakes. Um, this is one of the fun things that couples are excited about. They get to taste, they get to taste the catering, they get to taste the cakes. Um, there might be some concerns uh, when you're planning your wedding, especially if you have 100 to 150 guests. What I would just like to touch with that, what, what would you say is the, the typical wedding size that you're that you're seeing requests for? 100 it would be somewhat? Yeah, about 150. 100, 150. Yeah. So if you have 100, 150 guests coming to a wedding, obviously through that planning process somewhere, you're going to have the topic come up of safety and food safety and allergens. So tell us what are some of your customers asking you when they're planning large events and they have a concern about food safety? Um, well, first of all, with Cool Cat Cupcakes, we're no dairy, no eggs, no nuts, and we also offer gluten-free and vegan cupcakes. Um, I find that I do have uh, brides that have cousins or nieces and nephews that are coming to the wedding that have food allergies to um, a very variety of things, uh, soy, peanut butter, milk, and I can cater to that. Um, the nice thing about our product is it does taste very good, and a lot of times the bride and groom will actually have the cake and the cupcakes, um, all of it made by us uh, for everybody, even though that there are um, certain <coughs> allergies. But this way, the entire dessert is safe, um, and we can accommodate those uh, special requests. I know there are... Um, in this area, there's not a lot of places that you can can get this product. So, and not only that, being that we're in full swing engagement season, and a lot of these brides will not want to wait till 2017 to plan their wedding and to have their wedding. They will want a 2016 wedding. Finding that will even limit the market on food safety and then uh, you know gluten free and all of those types of um, services that might be available. So, Cool Cat Cupcakes, you can find them easily online. So, let's ask you, what are you seeing trending uh, recently? I find uh, simplicity. <laughs> I've had, had a wedding cake recently that was a very simple, rustic theme. Um, nothing, I think a lot of uh, the, the ornate roses and flowers are not so in anymore, I guess. It's a little bit more simple. Simple, and classic, classic. Mm -hmm. beautiful. And I do find that um, a lot of brides are happy because cupcakes tend to be a little bit more economical than a full on cake. Um, but we still offer small cutting cakes as well. And now Mark Gonzalez, DJ, entertainer, MC um, with InStep Entertainment, uh, familiar with incredible events of all types, so weddings, military events, um, and just uh, an amazing entertainer. So tell us a little about your business. Tell us what the brides are most surprised about when they're calling to ask you questions about your services. So InStep Entertainment, right out of here of Fredericksburg, uh, and I am the owner and operator of it, a uh, single operator. Um, and being veteran owned, I do a lot of military events. On the wedding side for the surprise is when my clients find out what the price actually is. Um, and there are a lot of different DJs out there with all different skill levels, different sound equipment, um, and what they bring to the table. But so where I'm at is, will be differently priced than other DJs. So I think they don't, and a lot of them aren't educated well enough on what a true DJ and master of ceremonies really does for a wedding. And that's when, you know, I take time to explain to them what the DJ actually does. He, he's really, the DJ is your life in the party. The DJ will either make or break the event. So uh, that's really the big one right there is, is, is the fee, you know, because they're, they're just not, they're just not aware of it. They've been to other events maybe where they've seen a DJ and MC just play music, not come over the microphone and make announcements and direct the flow of traffic and, and, the, and the sequence of events. Matthew Thwing uh, with Matthew Thwing Photography, award winner, <laughs> uh, amazing local business owner, capturer of moments that are life-changing. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about your business and some of the surprises that a couple may not have expected um, You know, when they start to call photographers, um, something they may not be aware of. I don't know if it's as much a surprise as far as just letting them know. A lot of the questions that I get are really how they should choose a photographer. And we get to a lot of bridal shows too. We'll have couples walk up to my wife and I and say, you know, we're walking around here and we're seeing all these pictures, but we really just don't know how to choose a photographer. Um, and what, how I usually answer that question is, you obviously want to 
be able to see a photographer's consistent body of work. So to see more than one wedding, to see different scenarios, um, do they have the ability to have a plan B if it's raining outside? How are they going to handle that? Are they purely, you know, natural light driven, natural, I say, you know, sunlight or ambient light, whatever is in the room, or do they have the skill set to use off camera flash, to use flash, to use stuff like that and still have the pictures look natural versus just somebody who's shooting with the flash directly on top of their camera and just kind of, you know, blowing out your, your face and making your face look all shiny and bright and stuff. So a lot of that is really educating them on what to look for in a photographer. And then the other side of that is, I usually say that's kind of step one. So make sure, at least when you look at their work, if you were to be inserted into their work or if you were to have pictures of you taken that were similar, that you would like them, that's number one. And number two is the personality because the photographer is there from you know the, the, the start of the day to the very end of it. So it's really important to be able to get along with your photographer fairly well and have a good relationship with them. So personality is huge. Um, and we're, my wife and I are, are fun. We are, um, we get asked a lot, you know, are you the kind of photographer who is interacting with the guests and, you know, or are you just kind of like invisible all day long, you know, photo, you know, photojournalism. And we're kind of a combination of both. Uh, but people are going to know that we're there because we just enjoy wedding days, you know, it's something that we're passionate about. So we like to meet your guests and, and interact with your guests. And by the end of the experience, um, usually someone takes our camera and wants to take pictures of us. So it's kind of funny, but um, I would say personality is really, you know, the second most important driver in, you know, how do I, how do I select my photographer for my wedding? And you know, I, Dee Dee, if I could too, because <laughs> the DJ and the photographer really have to have a good relationship. True. And what you touched on here was the personality. I have worked with a lot of photographers as he's worked with a lot of DJs. And personality, I've seen where some very dry personalities are all <laughs> taking photos and you can just see the bride and groom just not having a good time. Yeah. Where I've seen his work and I've seen other photographers who have good personalities that just make the bride and groom smile and have a good time to capture such good photos. So I, I think that's huge, that personality. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, I think every vendor you choose will be <clears throat> very personally based and this is not like selecting a plumber or some of the other things that you'll choose based um, solely on background and profession alone. Uh, the, the vendors that you choose you will find are very personally chosen. It's that, that handshake you get, that look in the eye, that feeling that they get you and that they listen to your style and a lot of times that's why our brides and grooms are choosing um, those vendors as well as based on their talent and background. So Matthew Thwing Absolutely. Photography, I want to thank you so much for being here as well as all of our panelists. I'd like to go around one last time and just uh, if you'll let everyone know what your website is and then just give one piece of advice to these couples and, and remember thousands and thousands of couples that will get engaged over the next couple of weeks and then again for Valentine's Day what is one simple piece of advice you can give these young couples um, be it have fun, smile, don't take yourself so seriously. What's one thing you would tell your brides um, uh, just and groups in this process? Um, well, our website is Marriott.com, um, Fredericksburg Historic District. And I would say, you kind of stole my thunder, but I would say have fun. Um, please get out of it what you want. Um, don't leave any stone unturned and definitely look at all your options. Wonderful. And Jennifer mentioned the website already, but just one thing I'll tell people is it's a complicated process with many folks involved, different vendors, different expenses. But if you can afford a planner, please get one. If you can't, find somebody, not your sister or brother, to uh, help you through this process. Great, great advice right there. Wedding planners, absolutely vital and important and, and worth the investment. Melody, you're not at events. Uh, again, I own Fredericksburg Jeweler. Um, my website is www.fredericksburgjeweler.com. And my best piece of advice is to never forget in the wedding process that it is about you guys. It's not about anybody else. So it's true. about what you guys want. It's about what you guys need. Because at the end of the day, it's only about you guys. And afterwards, it's only about you guys. So always remember that. That's, that's a big takeaway with a lot of brides and grooms. But Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And Jasmine? Yeah. Uh, so I'm Cool Cat Cupcakes again. It's coolcatcupcakes.com. Mm -hmm. And we're also on Facebook. Um, I would definitely say take a moment during the reception and just walk away, maybe with your photographer, and look back in at your reception, maybe through a window, 
or something. We did that with ours. We actually had a Ferris wheel. <laughs> we were able to go up for a ride and get pictures oh, taken. Cool. And we looked in and saw our family and friends. And it was just a really neat moment. But just take time for yourself and, and, um, and just remember, just remember everything that's going on. Oh, that's great. I love that. Thank you. Uh, so InStep Entertainment, uh, instepdj.com is the website. Uh, so some great advice here. I that stuff there to go with. But um, I would say just specifically, because they've, they've been pretty general on things with very good information, but I would say specific to DJing side of house, uh, make sure that you meet with your DJs. Uh, it's great to have that phone call early enough with them. And then as you narrow down, I would say narrow down to maybe uh, three DJs, set up a meeting and consultation with them and really get a feel for the personality to who, um, who you best, you know, can downsize to as far as picking that DJ. So definitely, you know, meeting with the DJ is very important for the personality too, as we talked. Absolutely. Yeah. Hi, um, so Jasmine totally stole mine, but um, <laughs> Matthew Twing from Matthew Twing Photography, <clears throat> excuse me, my website is, uh, it's Matthew and Twing is spelled T-H-W-I-N-G, um, photography.com. Um, I would, I love that point um, of, I was going to say to actually kind of plan Plan a moment where you can walk away. Um, a lot of couples do it in a first look um, with the photographer, and then we leave the couple alone for a couple of minutes just to kind of just to kind of be with each other because um, your wedding is going to go by so fast. Um, at the end of it, you won't remember what happened. Um, and fortunately, I get to deliver images to you later on that will help you to remember what happened. But so many times, I hear couples say, "This has gone by so fast." So I, I love that point. Um, but the other suggestion I would have is if it's possible to um, possibly push your budget a tiny little bit if you have a vendor who you like. And I think liking your vendors is huge. So if you've got one who's maybe a little bit more than someone else who is, you know, fairly decent in work, but you really just don't get it on with them as far as the personalities, I would say to see if it's possible for you to kind of stretch just that little bit more to get those vendors that you like. because. Um, a good relationship with your vendor is really going to be um, your entire experience. And if you're planning this from, um, you know, six to eight to, you know, 18 months out, you're going to have a lot of dialogue and interactions with those folks. I think it's really important to have a relationship with your vendors that um, you get along with them and they treat you professionally, but they're also human beings and um, understand what you're going through and can, can help you through that process. Absolutely. Great advice, everyone. I have a little tip myself. Uh, find locally owned and operated businesses, uh, <clears throat> businesses that have local representation. Uh, the importance of that is that business relationship. Uh, being in the wedding industry and being a vendor in the wedding industry is all about building and managing relationships. There is no perfect event. Never, ever, ever. You may feel like your wedding was perfect or is going to be perfect. And if you pick the right vendors, it will. And you will never have an idea of any of those little things that came up along the way because you have picked a professional team like the one you see here and they managed all those little hiccups behind the scenes and you never even knew about it. They're not running around freaking out or panicking. They're calm, they're cool, they're collected. They've been, they've been doing this for a long time. And that's the tip for me is, um, you know, pick, pick wisely, find locally owned and operated businesses that you could trust and depend on and build that relationship through the whole entire process. And we really want to thank Bella Giornata Events uh, right next to Ava Loren Broad in beautiful downtown Fredericksburg. We want to thank you for watching. Uh, register on vawenetwork.com so we can help you for free to find uh, vendors that you need venues that still have dates available, and anything else you need during your wedding planning process. Congratulations to all of you getting engaged this holiday season. We look forward to taking care of you and helping you have an amazing, wonderful wedding.